Hi, I'm Martin Longdon from Leading Point. I'm here on the online prosperity show with Prosper, and I'm here to talk to you today about how to utilize this thing called LinkedIn in a strategic way to help you build a robust and rigorous business development system that will get you more clients, create great qualified sales opportunities, and give you a lot of confidence in building the business and growing your revenue. I'm looking forward to catching up with you soon. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got the LinkedIn pro himself, Martin. Martin, how are you doing, my friend? I'm really well, Prosper. It's great to be a part of your show. Thank you so much for inviting me on. Absolutely. Well, you are going to be dropping a lot of value for us, so I really want to thank you in advance. Because obviously, with our viewers, um, we are on social media. Everybody else is trying to get leads and bring them across to their website or get leads so they can convert them into customers that will be paying for their luxury lifestyles that they want as entrepreneurs, right? But it's not always easy. You're going to have to use either social media, you're going to have to use word of mouth or featuring in person. And these days, whenever you network with anyone, people are still going to look you up online. People are still going to check you out on whatever professional uh, social media you might be in. LinkedIn seems to be the one which is a go-to place. But Martin, as you and me know, everybody else is confused about what LinkedIn really is and how to actually get the most out of it. So that's the reason why we've brought you the professional in this so you can give us detail as to how we can actually, first of all, be as good like you on LinkedIn, and second of all, actually get our leads and convert them so that we can be, do, and have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. But before we get into that, Martin, tell us a little bit about your story and what really got you interested in this platform that um, a lot of people dread so much. Sure, sure, sure. Great question. I think when I looked at this and I reviewed this in my own uh, appreciation of why LinkedIn, why do I have this interest now? I think when you look back over the last few years of my career development, a lot of that time has been spent in sales development, business development and account management. And so we're in 2017. So I'm talking around about you know, 1987, 19, actually 1989 was my first sales role. Now this is old school. No, mobile, no mobile, mobile phones existed. We didn't have access to the internet as it was at that time. Um, our presentation uh, consisted of a face-to-face -face meeting with physical collateral in our hands. So we had to learn how to understand the customer, what we now refer to as the customer buying journey. And so that really hasn't changed over the last 30 years, I've found at least anyway. And that customer buying journey is just understanding what are people looking for when they initially become aware of something what, how do they want to engage? What do they want to learn? How are they going to make a decision? And then how can you help them be guided through that decision to then own your service? So that still is exactly the same now as was it was back 30 years ago. So fast forward to where we are today, or we'll say in the last probably two years, and I had a really good review of the business. I've been dealing in leadership coaching. I've been working with small businesses, and I narrowly found time and time again that when we came up against the leadership challenges that small teams were having around their business, ultimately the subject of sales came up. How do we work with people and still maintain our operations and coordinate our communication without becoming distracted? And so these conversations being led into the topics around sales caused me to begin to think, okay, what are you doing on Facebook? What are you doing around social media? How are you utilizing LinkedIn? And I think in all honesty, Prosper, what I would bring as value to answer your question right now is in part of that, that my, uh, made a bid and I now bought LinkedIn as we know for I think it was 26 or 29 billion dollars count all the zeros are all there and I think with them incorporating that into their product suite they've been able to create some greater coherency between some of the features and the functions of LinkedIn so when I look at the and revealing the business development tool recently, I found that they've organized and coherently brought together the features of LinkedIn. It aligns to the customer buying journey. The features enable you to initiate that conversation. And then with some of their features that they've included and built in, for example, Sales Navigator, they've done some work around that recently. 
And they've also introduced this great new platform called Point Drive that allows you to track and engage interaction with some of that collateral that you want to present before your audience as a way to measure their level of interest and therefore will help you qualify that interest and then know where to direct your efforts to maximize your time to then create those new sales opportunities. So for me, LinkedIn is really about this. It's a large community. A lot of people really don't know how to uh, operate it because of prior experience. It's come from a, I think, a recruiting development background, which has been part of its legacy that it has had to work through. And then with the recent advent of sales navigator and point, it's actually helped better understand how this can be utilized to foster business through networking, as well as utilize social media technology within a natural sales process for a client buying journey to then help people take advantage of technology, build a relationship, but still move a business forward and actually create value for both parties that are engaged in that sales process. Understandable. Thank you so much for that really well thought out, um, you know, answer and tremendous value. We might as well just end the show with that because <laughs> that could actually suffice us. Now, Martin, you did raise a very valid point because um, in marketing, as far as anybody else is concerned, there's really three M's. Your message, the market you're going to um, be you know, reaching out with that message and the media that you're going to be using. So you did mention well before 20, um, I don't know when LinkedIn sort of started, they were still sales and people still needed to deliver a message to a specific market. Now, LinkedIn just happens to be a media that is, you know, being utilized lately because now we've got an extension of our hands, which happens to be a smartphone. All right. But still people get really caught up in the media aspect of the things. How important, first of all, before we really get into the meat of what you're doing, is knowing who your target audience is and what message you're reaching out to them for before you spray and pray on LinkedIn and make a big mess of everything? Zero to 10, it's 11. Seriously, because if you don't have a really good understanding, and I'm going to share something that a lot of people don't usually discuss or even think about when we talk about the subject, you've got to really understand your ideal client, the profile of your ideal client, or what some people refer to as your ideal avatar. And so there's three, essentially, there's three elements that your client is looking for and that you need to be aware of that they have, that they are looking for. And that is the elements associated with their challenge. And that might be things that they've experienced, their backstory, what they've tried previously, who they've worked with previously, um, some, of the, some of the solutions they may have come across in part or heard of previously. And then you've got the, the, their identity. How do they like to really interact with a business? Do they, are they seeking a more of a, um, a community gift style? Are they seeking a leadership style? Are they seeing someone who's like a research assistant to find all the facts and figures and then they'll take that knowledge away and work it out themselves? Are they happy to do that? And then you've got the other side, which is really about um, what is your story? How do you communicate your story? Is it like an us versus them? Is it, um, you know, from loss to redemption? Uh, is it an amazing discovery or a secret that you've got that a lot of people don't know? So all these things you need to factor in. And, and there's probably, I think, about 27 points at last count across those three major categories of helping people to understand how to create a really, really clear, incisive, clear, ideal client profile. So when you're looking for these people, you're seeking to connect with them, you know exactly who you're speaking to. And that's important because that is going to then help frame your message that you then convey to the market. Now, that's the front end. The back end of all of this is that switch seats. Your ideal client, in their thinking, has this profile of who is their ideal supplier. So then you need to give consideration to then thinking about who do I need to become a business, business provider to fit their particular ideal profile of what they see as an ideal supplier. So the way to answer that question is becoming really, really laser-like, clear and focused on understanding who your ideal client is, that will give you a lot of clues as to who they are looking for in their ideal supplier. That I would rate as probably beside next mission, values and vision within your business, that is the next key thing that you need to be really clear on as a way to help you um, determine how you're going to do business, 
how you're going to communicate with your market, how you're going to create your product, and the type of experience and outcome and solution you want to give them. Understandable. You you keep raising all the nuggets in there. Thank you so much. It's uh, yet another show I'm going to have to reintroduce. Now we've got two episodes out of your two answers right there. Right. Right. <laughs> well, sir, you have a lot of value to your audience, Prosper. I love what you do. It's really cool. Thank you so much. Right. So now that we've figured out who we are reaching out to, now that they have probably for some weird reason ended up on our lap and what we now need to do is lead them through our, um, you know, our buying journey. Can you just walk us now through how the tools or oh, what then is the next step and how LinkedIn can be vital in order for us to lead our clients up until the purchase point through Absolutely. that buyer's journey? So there's nine stages in the buying journey. Let's focus on the first four, all right, in order to answer your question. So the first stage in the buying journey is they become aware that you exist. There's awareness around this. It's pretty simple. And so how we utilize LinkedIn. Well, you can utilize the LinkedIn free, which is a good start, but I also recommend that you get into the LinkedIn premium because it's got a few additional features to help you present your expertise and who you represent and the brand that you represent really, really clearly and very well. Um, your LinkedIn profile consists of three main areas. It is about your presentation, it is about your assets, and then it is about the way that you message and interact and connect with your community. So if we look at um, starting with your LinkedIn profile as a way to start with the buying journey, it's really utilizing your profile to create awareness, reach out to your audience with that really clear profile of your ideal client and actually create something that you know is going to be of value in a connection request along with what I suggest is a link to another resource that they can click on and have a look at that opens up more detail around what your connection request is about. I'll give you an example. So as you know that I assist my, my um, ideal client, my market is working with coaches and consultants, advisors and brokers to help them find new clients. That's it. So it's a pretty narrow audience. So when I send out a connection request, I'll send out, hi Prosper, I wanted to raise awareness. Key thing, I don't want to connect with you to sell you something. I'm seeking to raise awareness on how to utilize LinkedIn to help you find and connect with more clients and develop more sales opportunities. If you'd like to know more information, you can go to this link and that will give you some more detail. Hope to connect with this. So I think with the count of about 300 characters within your message, that's a pretty brief message, it's to the point, and if I can add another layer to this, Prosper, I use a method when I structure my messages called the C3X method, and that is, um, three C's, you start with uh, uh, conflict, you identify conflict. The conflict for my audience is how do I use LinkedIn to connect with new client opportunities. So my response to that is I'm seeking to raise awareness with you on how to utilize LinkedIn to find and connect with more ideal clients. Okay. Then the converge, the second C is converge. So I'm now providing them a link to find out more details as a solution to then address that challenge of that question. And the final C is coaching, which is I hope to see you soon. It's a really easy coaching point. You wanna keep it easy in your first uh, connection or your first um, uh, outreach to your ideal client that you wanna connect with. So that forms a very simple message. Now, to give you an idea of the feedback that I've when I started trialing this a few weeks ago and testing this, I would do around about uh, say three, close to two and a half to 3,000 searches around profiles of my ideal client across the country and across a couple of other countries. And uh, after the first, and I've had to turn it off because I'm getting so many responses now, which is great. But the first two and a half to 3,000 searches, I ended up getting, I think it was a 27% response in wanting to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's phenomenal. You know, usually it's been about one or two percent. Definitely. So, two and a half thousand requests. So I got back something close to seven hundred and thirty. Um, uh, you know, Brian has confirmed your connection request. Mary has confirmed your connection request. Joseph has confirmed your connection request. The thing with this is that you have to keep in mind 
unfortunately at this stage, to take that confirmation and then update their profile in what I teach in then engaging that person and, and, and taking them through what I call a welcome cadence. Sharing pieces of information. For example, my first welcome message would be, thank you so much for connecting with me here on LinkedIn Prosper. I'm a keen advocate of creating visibility on how to use, utilize your LinkedIn intelligently to help you simply and practically create new sales opportunities. Keep an eye out for a couple of follow-up messages with some more detail over this in the next couple of days. Best, Martin. Okay, so you're already, you're already preempting them to anticipate messages from you there already and uh, they'll be on the lookout for them. Okay. And for the purpose of learning more about how to use LinkedIn in order to then make it a tool that is practical, useful, and can really be something to strengthen and aid their business development. The key here is that when you connect with people, you've got to have a reason for connecting and it must be first service orientated and then provide them some information that they can look and research in their own time because that part of the, that part of the buying journey, the awareness, and then the connection is really about and researching details about leading point before you send out an invite to welcome you on your show. You wanted to make sure that what I had to offer you for your audience was going to be practical, relevant, and then create some value to fill in those gaps and actually give them something to aid their own business development. In. So this is what you've got to understand about your ideal client as well. They are doing their own research. Make it easy for them to do that. Great stuff. Yes, because people are coming to the internet to get information, and if you're providing them that information, then you're already instilling the trust. They already know you, and people do business with those they know, like, and trust, which makes it a whole lot easier there. So any of the stuff that you then do um, for your clients, maybe let me start and ask this question. So the people that come to you, your consultants, the coaches, and the, the brokers, what is actually happening within their business for them to come to you? Because some people don't realize what they need up until they, you, they are made aware of what's missing out um, for them there. Three things. Got a problem. I need to find more clients. I've got to drop the hammer on time because I don't have too much of the time. It's taking me away from my business. And how do I figure out this LinkedIn stuff? Is it really any, is it really any good? Can it do what so many people have told me it can do? Uh, do I believe the messages that LinkedIn send? How do I figure this thing out? So it's really learning about LinkedIn, giving them back their time, and then redirecting their focus into their business to connect them with what they are really good at doing and are great at delivering on, which is their technical expertise, not their business development um, stretch that a lot of people have to go through. It's a little bit like uh, if you're really good at doing something, then find a place where you can perform and do that well. But if you're not so great at doing something to help you get there, then find someone who can help you to connect to then get you to do what you're really good at. Otherwise, you're splitting and dividing your focus. You're wearing too many hats. From doing what you're naturally doing. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for clarifying that because, you know, some people really don't realize they've got a problem up until you tell them, hey, listen, this is your problem right there. And once somebody has realized they've, um, you know, they've acknowledged that they've got that problem, um, how are you then helping them? Are you, you know, just showing them what to do and then they go back home and do it for them um, themselves? Or are you offering a done for you service, which people can actually um, you know, either be learned from you and from learning from you, then, you know, you can then implement the things for them. Sure. So as part of that buying journey and a part of the way that people research, they fall into four categories. The first category is that, okay, I see value. I want to do this thing. I need you to do that thing. I want you to provide a done for your service. So I provide a concierge service that essentially says, we will work with your LinkedIn structure work with your scripts and your assets and details about the service, we'll create the pipeline and the LinkedIn experience to help you find and connect with those new leads and then qualify them and connect them. So when you're talking to them, you're actually dealing with qualified sales leads that you're spending the majority of your time building your business and delivering value and creating those new sales opportunities. 
The second category is people that want to be self-directed in their education. So this would be people that are ideally, look, um, I like the value, but I'd like to take myself through it because that's my thing. Some people just like to learn what they need to do and they want to make sure they've got their head around it and understand it first before they think about what can I outsource or who, who can I get to do this. Third category are people that just want to learn a little bit more about the details of the service without the education. And so I direct those people into Leading Point Plus, which is just a subscription-based service on my blog. And each week they get specific details about tactical skill sets or specific details about LinkedIn Pro, whether it's the LinkedIn profile or point drive, as a way to help them on their learning journey. The first one, the concierge, these guys are quick. The second one is I want to take my time, but I'm interested. The third one is I don't have a lot of time. I'm focused on other things right now, but I do want to keep an, in, an open window to maintain view here and learn a little bit whilst I'm dealing with this other challenge. And so if you're able to create that um, triage of categories as a way to present your service through LinkedIn, then you're going to be able to capture those three different ranges of interest with your ideal client and you'll never be without interest or an opportunity for you to engage with people that want to find out more about your services. Absolutely. Well, um, if anybody has been watching right now, they've actually been ushered onto the front row seat of getting in touch um, you know, with your service so that they too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable while using um, you know, the capabilities of what LinkedIn has to offer. Now, if somebody's watching right now and they really you know, are interested in knowing a lot more, how best can people get a hold of you there, Mark? The best way to reach me is to either message me direct on LinkedIn, of course, or they could send me a, an email with their inquiry and just address that to inquiries at leadingpoint.com.au, which is the same email address they will find on my LinkedIn profile. Understandable. So obviously just winding up this show, LinkedIn recently just reported that 74% of a lot of companies, um, you know, either using them as a business or, um, people are searching for relevant, you know, information about that. Some people might just be putting LinkedIn in that too hard a basket. What sort of, you know, confirmation can you give us or can you, you know, hold somebody by the collar and say, Hey, listen, you're leaving a lot of money on the table here by not being on LinkedIn, just jump on board and, um, um, you know, you know, wet your feet or something like that. What, what, what yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So my, my encouragement to your viewers right now this would be to consider that LinkedIn is a, a, a commercial platform of networking in social media of choice. Uh, more and more companies are recognizing the fact, and, and I want to make a point too, is that for you to engage in LinkedIn, you're not required as from a business development perspective to use paid advertising is the cream on the top. It's not a necessity. I've built my business with absolutely no paid advertising or adverts on LinkedIn whatsoever. It's just simply understanding and appreciating how people want to connect, utilizing the features within LinkedIn and creating a messaging that is really easy to engage with, that comes across as non-salesy, that seeks to add value and invites people, if they want to learn more, to learn more through that education spectrum and then just seek to keep touch points with them throughout that process how can i serve you more what additional resources could i offer you that might offer further clarity to help you better understand how to utilize linkedin and so if you're willing from a business development perspective to engage with your ideal client and provide elements of your service with them more from a service point of view and an educational style then you will not be without inquiries and responses you and even inquiring or wanting to find out further information about your service. The bottom line about your question here is that LinkedIn's here to stay. It's only going to grow. Uh, Microsoft have made that decision. They make decisions for the long term and they've got a lot of plans. I don't know what they are, but I know for a fact that Bill and his team would have a lot of plans for how they want LinkedIn to develop. And there's a, probably a couple of pictures I could share with you that maybe we don't have time for today, but essentially point towards creating a very 
um, comprehensive um, business environment that coordinates video, networking, real time, the exchange of assets and being able to track that information in real time, um, surveys, and also uh, feedback on the experiences that customers or clients have with your service or anywhere part of that business development buying journey that they go through to really create a very comprehensive level of visibility as to who is engaged and why are they engaged in order to really identify those specific sales opportunities that create a very fluid business development environment. I'm pretty excited about LinkedIn. I've seen a lot of development over the last few years and I've got to tell you, I am excited about what LinkedIn holds to promise and it is an underutilized tool, mainly because, let's face it, before I really looked at my profile, it was terrible. I had my profile looking in a way that just didn't read well and it was vanilla. It looked like everybody else's. But if there's one tip I could give you for changing your profile right now, it would be simply this. Find the answer to the question that is primarily being asked by your ideal client as a way to solve their main challenge that your service can answer. And whatever the answer to that question is, then that needs to become your tagline on your LinkedIn profile directly beneath your name. You have about two to three seconds to capture people's curiosity and attention when they find your profile. So if they see Martin Longdon, coach, consultant, trainer, LinkedIn guru, expert, whatever you want to call it, it's like, yeah, it's bland, it's vanilla. But when they see I mean, helping coaches, consultants, brokers and advisors gain more clients on LinkedIn, that's one of the key answers to the question that's floating around their mind or the mind of my ideal client is, how can I use LinkedIn to find and connect and develop more sales opportunities on LinkedIn? How can I use this thing? And then they see my tagline, helping, client, helping coaches, consultants, advisors and brokers find more clients on LinkedIn. It's just a natural rapport when they see the profile to what they've been thinking about and then that will inspire their curiosity to want to read down the profile and learn a little bit more. That's the one tip I can give you viewers. Absolutely. That is worth its weight in gold right there because a lot of people use that real estate space to tell people how good they are or what it is that they offer. Nobody cares what you know they care what you can do for them so if that space can be utilized to actually um you know convert clients there and there into your way of thinking and actually show them you can help them by actually helping them then they would think that you've got the solution to whatever problem they might have now martin i can't thank you enough for your your energy your story your content that you just dropped on here i'm actually gonna extend yet another offer so that maybe we can create a, a, a dedicated video that really goes through and we can share screens so that this can actually be in the paid section of um you know my uh, my website that we can talk about a little bit later on but thank you so much for this um you know segment of uh, what you just showed us, which was just meant to be a tidbit or a, um, a tip of the iceberg, but I think somebody can actually run home with this content and create a business and a profile that will actually be profitable for them and they can actually enjoy um, you know, the benefits of them getting leads from the platform. Thank you so much there, Martin. Very welcome. And, and just a really quick note, I, um, and pause. So I've just created a pause there just in case you want to edit this out for any reason. But I was going to say, um, if, if you feel it would be of value for your audience to prosper, I, I've actually created a comprehensive blueprint, <clears throat> a process map that looks at LinkedIn Premium, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, and then LinkedIn Point Drivers, those three major platforms. And then the key actions that you need to take under each of those main platforms for you to build a comprehensive, business development system that will lead you to more leads and gaining more sales opportunities. If you feel like something like that could be of uh, use or of value for your audience, <clears throat> pardon me, to at least give them an overview of what their LinkedIn business strategy and business development system should look like to give them a head start to better understand how to use this thing. I'm 
more than happy to provide that for your audience and they can have that to uh, refer to and perhaps even maybe create a Q&A in their feedback that you could then utilize before we then get on for our second catch up and we could take your audience's live Q&A and then really deliver value for your audience within your paid member section to really help you uh, boost the value that you want to create for your members there as well if you'd like to do that. Absolutely. I'm not going to edit this part out because okay. obviously it's almost Christmas and it's Thanksgiving in the States today and you've just, yes. given, us, he's just given us a big present right there. Um, do you have a link that you can supply to me so we can put it in the show notes? Absolutely. I'll forward the link to uh, first things I want to get off to you and I can then make sure that we've got the associated um, structure of that page and there'll be a download link where they can then click on that link. That will then open up a PDF document and then that PDF is either there for them to view on the screen or they can download that to their device. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough. I'm going to have to get you off air just in case you're going to give us your whole strategy now. And <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much there, Martin. You're welcome, Prosper. Great to be a part of the show. Thank you.